Today, I want to share with you how to pack less but better. Some of the packing hacks that have helped me go from a chronic overpacker to being able to travel pretty much anywhere in the world using only a carry-on suitcase. Because if there's anything that I've learned over the years, it's that overpacking just isn't worth it. It's stressful always having to worry about weight limits. Plus, once you arrive at your destination, you need to lug everything that you packed around with you. So I'm all about leaving the excess behind when I travel and instead packing lightly, packing efficiently, and bringing the right things with me. So today, I just want to share with you some of the top tips that have helped me to become a better packer. These are tips that I've used when packing for Europe for a month, traveling to the other side of the world and visiting New Zealand, going to Canada in the winter, and so many other amazing trips, all in a carry-on suitcase. So let's get into this now, and I want to begin with talking about your bags. I'm a big believer that the right suitcase, the right personal item can quite literally make or break your travel experience. On one hand, it can be incredibly frustrating to try to travel around with a bag that you feel like you have to fight against in order to move it from destination to destination. But a good suitcase can make it feel like a breeze and hardly any effort at all. So first for suitcases, probably the biggest thing for me is that you want to have a suitcase where the wheels can spin 360 degrees, which just makes traveling through airports and also just en route to your hotel, Airbnb, anything like that, just so much easier. Then I'm also a big fan of the hard shell suitcases that open up like a book. I just find that they're a lot easier to pack when you're at your destination. You can just look in them and kind of more easily see everything that you have. And then in my experience too, I've just found them to be a bit more durable. And then I know that there are circumstances where just packing only a carry-on isn't realistic. However, what I'll say is whenever possible, I am a huge proponent of packing and traveling with only a carry-on suitcase. And there are a few big reasons for this. Number one, and probably the most significant, is that if you travel with only a carry-on, you're not going to have to deal with the problem of your baggage getting lost or left behind at another airport and so just kind of completely removes that stress and worry which honestly is something that I've had to deal with so many times same thing with friends we've literally been without suitcases for days of our trip that can be just incredibly hampering especially if you are trying to travel to multiple destinations sometimes you literally like need to go on to the next place and you're just stuck waiting for your bags but the great thing is if you're traveling with a carry-on suitcase only, you just don't need to even worry or think about that. So I love that. But then also too, when you arrive at your destination, say your bag doesn't get lost and makes it with you safely, it just makes it a lot easier when you're only using a carry-on suitcase to go from destination to destination or from the airport to your hotel to wherever. It just makes it a lot easier to travel if you don't have tons of massive bags with you and just being able to travel light with only a carry-on just makes everything a lot more simple and just like portable. And then for your personal item, I'd say that there's a lot more flexibility here, but personally, I'm a big fan of the backpack. The reason for that is it's really easy typically to slip over your suitcase if you're traveling around an airport, but if you're going around a city, it's really nice just to be able to put that on your back, it leaves you completely hands-free and unlike either a duffel bag or a purse or something like that, it doesn't just put a ton of weight on one shoulder or the other, it kind of distributes that evenly. So I just find that it kind of makes for an ideal personal item. Plus the fact that they often have a bit more space than just carrying a purse. So those are just a few general tips on bags, but now let's dive into the packing process itself. And where I like to begin is with a list. And there are so many packing lists available online. Personally, I find a lot of them to be overkill. However, I do think that there is a ton of value in beginning with a list just to make sure that you have all of the essentials and things that you'll really need on the trip. So personally, what I like to do is I just have a note on my phone that contains a generic list of like the things that I like to bring on pretty much every trip. So it has kind of like categories for a few basic 
clothing items, hygiene essentials, things like that. Then what I'll do when I'm packing for a specific trip is I'll just duplicate that list and customize it based on the location that I'm going, the weather while I'll be away, how long I'll be gone, and all of those other factors. It's just so helpful to have that reminder of everything that you need and really gives you the confidence that you aren't leaving anything behind. And the one warning I will add with this one, it's to please double check your list before heading out the door. I recently had a friend who was traveling internationally and she basically like flew to an airport to fly out with her family on this trip and she forgot her passport at her home and so she literally had to fly back home and then rebook a separate flight so she could join her family on that trip. And obviously forgetting your passport at home is pretty much the worst case scenario, something that we probably have all worried about at one point or another. But I just want you to use this as your reminder, whether it's as significant as your passport or as minor as your toothbrush, you know, that is something that can be fairly easily replaced. But hey, you don't want to have to do that. So please double check that list before before you head out the door. And then when it comes to what you pack, if there is one piece of advice I can give you, it's that less truly is more. Think back on the last few trips that you've been on and I want you to ask yourself the question, what did I actually use? And is there anything that I thought I would use but I didn't? The next time that you pack for a trip, make that adjustment and leave those aspirational items at home. Then something that I've started doing that I find really helpful is just as I'm packing for a trip, I'll begin with laying out everything that I think I may need. And then from there, just begin paring it down and seeing what really is essential and what are some items that might be superfluous and that I can instead leave behind. And it's just all about trying to whittle down what you pack to the things that you actually need to help ensure that you just don't have wasted space in your suitcase. All right, but then let's talk about some practical strategies that really make packing light a lot easier. A really big one is just to be strategic with your fabric choices. So when it comes to clothes, I would try to avoid or at least minimize how many super wrinkly fabrics that you're bringing with you. So things like linen, cotton, and instead to opt for less wrinkle prone fabrics like denim, wool, or knit. And ultimately that's just going to give you a more hassle-free travel experience and one last thing to worry about while you're on the road. And then something that will really help you to maximize a more minimal travel capsule wardrobe is just to lean into a color scheme. I will be the first one to admit that I'm a big neutrals girl when it comes to packing, just because I find that it allows for maximum versatility. But that being said, you can easily integrate colors into your travel capsule. The key is just to pick colors that will go well with each other. So as you pack, begin with a base of neutrals, but then identify two, three, if you love color, maybe even four or five different shades that work really well with each other that can still enable you to mix and match items together, allowing you to have a versatile yet still colorful and fun wardrobe. The big thing to keep in mind is just that with any item that you bring, you want to be able to pair that one item with multiple other items in your suitcase. Okay, then I want to focus on shoes for a minute because these can easily take up the most room in our suitcases. What I want you to keep in mind when packing is the rule of three. For the vast majority of places that you travel to, you want to take just three pairs of shoes with you. One pair of sandals, one sneaker, and one dressier shoe. And honestly, that might not sound like much, but you can really get by with that in the vast majority of situations. The big exception I'll make for this is if you're planning a more outdoors active adventure where you know you're not going to need to dress up a ton, what you can do is just swap out that dressier shoe for like an active shoe, like a hiking boot or running shoe. This is a rule that I've used in so many different packing situations, but it really does work. And it really works out well too, because it enables you to wear one pair of shoes on the plane or on your travel day and then you're only packing one pair of shoes at that point and a sandal. The nice thing about sandals is that they tend to take up a lot less space. 
And then for actually packing your shoes, just a couple recommendations. Number one are to use either shoe covers or I like to use cotton produce bags to put your shoes in. That way they're kind of separate from everything else in the suitcase. None of your clothes or anything else is going to get dirty. And then also too, a lot of people will tell you to kind of shove things into any pairs of shoes that you have which if the shoes don't condense well, I think is good advice. But what I always try to do is to pack shoes that I can kind of smush flat and condense really, really tightly. And that way there really isn't a ton of excess space in those shoes. You don't need to worry about like shoving anything into a dirty shoe. Honestly, that's a little gross to me. So just try to condense your shoes as much as possible. If you can't do that, go ahead and fill the space, but try smushing them as flat as possible first. All right, and then one kind of more general tip that I find really makes the packing experience a lot smoother is to keep your travel essentials packed. Especially when it comes to toiletries, this can make such a difference. Have a TSA approved toiletries bag that you just always keep packed that you can easily just grab and go. And that is a great place to start, but especially if you travel more frequently, I love kind of applying this idea to other areas as well. My makeup bag is one of those things for me. It just always stays packed. Then I even like to keep just like a little pouch with all of my daily essentials, kind of like the contents of my purse. And that way, whenever I'm packing for a trip, I don't need to kind of like empty up purses or bags or anything like that. It's all nicely contained and I can just put it in my suitcase or my personal item. It's just little things like that that really help to simplify the packing process and make it so that when you're packing, getting ready to go on a trip, really the only big thing that you need to worry about is clothing. And speaking of which, let's talk about a huge tip for organizing the clothing in your suitcase, and that's to store your clothes vertically. I don't really care if you want to roll your clothing, you want to fold it, you want to do kind of a hybrid and something in between, but one thing that I do find makes a tremendous difference is to store your clothing items vertically. There are a couple of reasons for this. Number one, it just makes it a lot easier to see what you have. You open up your suitcase and just at a glance, everything is kind of sitting there in front of you. But then also too, I find that when you store your items vertically, it really does make it so that your suitcase gets a whole lot less messy. It just kind of keeps things more compact, separated, and easier to store. So in my experience at least, organizing vertically is the way to go. Then finally, I just wanted to end this with a little reminder to be strategic with where you store things. So as you're packing, just think through what would be better suited to your carry-on suitcase versus your personal item. You know, those things that you want easy access to as you're in the airport or on a travel day would probably be better suited to your personal item, whereas things that you'll only need at your destination or bulkier items would probably be a better fit for your carry-on. So that's always helpful to think through, but then a few other things I'd recommend too are making sure that you're storing like items together. That's going to make just for a more organized suitcase and a more efficient packing process. And then also too, if you have any delicate items like a camera or something like that, there are a lot of different like wraps people will sell online to be able to protect your valuables and other delicate items. But personally, in my experience, I've found that just using clothing to provide a bit of support and protection really has never steered me wrong, especially if you have like a fluffy scarf or a sweater or something like that. That can be perfect just to wrap your camera, whatever that valuable item is in, to make sure that it doesn't get damaged as you travel. Well, those are some of my favorite tips on how to pack less but better. I will share the links to just a handful of my travel favorites in the description box below. So if you're wondering what suitcase or backpack that I use, anything like that, I will link to that in the description box below. Now I would love to know what are some of your favorite packing hacks? Be sure to let me know in the comments below. And as always, don't forget to give this video a like if you enjoyed it and subscribe if you haven't already. I'll see you in the next one, friends. Bye.